sisters, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. In Esther chapter 2, verse 7, we find that Esther's first name was Hadassah. The name Hadassah means an ordinary myrtle tree. Esther means bright shining star. When she first came to Babylon, hardly anyone knew her. She came as a captive, a slave, as an orphan girl, without any prominence or political backing. But because of her virtues, she became a bright shining star, and her name was changed from Hadassah to Queen Esther, as one who had received eternal life, or new life. Here lies the divine secret of a happy life with purpose in a time of uncertainty and unfamiliar situations. Many people are governed by faces. However, the outward appearance is no proof of inward beauty. God doesn't see the outward, outward qualifications, only the inward heart of complete reliance on Him. The light of God shining within us is what gives us true beauty. Let us not worry about the uncertain future ahead, but let us sit in his secret presence and enjoy the joy that only comes when we focus our hearts and our minds on him. Only then can we surely enjoy God's favor and live out our life and purpose that God has prepared for us. Just as Queen Esther found solace in the God she and her family served as she lived among those in the foreign land. The same can also be said of Daniel's life as he trusted God, even though the king's court was looking forward to his downfall. Both Queen Esther and Daniel had been brought as captives into a foreign land with really no one to support them. They had many difficult decisions to make that put their life in danger. But God used them according to his perfect plan and purpose, and they became a light to those around them. The head eunuch and King Exorcist knew that Esther was different. The King of Babylon knew that Daniel was different. Do you think they were qualified? No, Esther was a new queen who had no political background or family to sway the king in her favor. She was an orphan girl, alone among the king's court. Moses had a stammering tongue, with no skill in persuasive words to lead the people of Israel. Many of Jesus' close disciples were born in a fishery business, with no background in Jewish scripture or the law. So. It wasn't because they were qualified in any way, but because the God living in them was able to shine through as a bright shining star. What an honor to have the true and living God within us. We can, we can, we lose so much by not knowing the secret of God's presence. God's word says in Psalm 16 verse 11, Thou wilt shew me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy. On thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. It is only in the presence of God that one can truly and fully have the fullness of joy in the middle of such a troublesome global crisis that we face now. The Lord Jesus came into the world to die on the cross for our sins so that we may have eternal life and be born again. The holy God, the loving God, the mighty God, the compassionate God came to live within us and among us. That truth alone will give you victory over every trial today. Those who want to experience a peace that surpasses all understanding must have their sins forgiven and their hearts cleansed. That is why the Lord shed his blood on the cross so that we may have peace of heart and of minds in his presence. No trial or fear can surpass a peace that comes with knowing Christ. So how can we know that this is true? 
we can too see it in the presence of God always, in health or sickness, in poverty or prosperity, in the midst of enemies or friends, far away from home or at home, in young age or old age, in war or famine, in earthquake or scarcity, or even in a time of global disease like now, you can enjoy his presence. It is such an experience that gives happiness to God's children. The great God of the universe came down from heaven to live among us. Therefore, let us not murmur or complain, but be grateful to God in every situation. Enjoy his presence at all times, because in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, God's word says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let us praise him and worship him with this song together. In the secret of his presence, how my soul delights to hide. Oh, how precious are the lessons which I learn at Jesus' side. Earthly cares can never vex me, neither trials lay me low. For when Satan comes to tempt me, to the secret place I go. To the secret place I go. When my soul is faint and thirsty neath the shadow of his wing, there is cool and pleasant filter and a crash and crystal spring. And my Savior rests beside me as we hold communion sweet. If I tried, I could not utter what he says when thus we meet. What he says when thus we meet. Only this I know, I tell him all my doubts, my griefs and fears. Oh, how patiently he listens, and my drooping soul he cheers. Do you think he ne'er reproves me? What a false friend he would be if he never, never told me of the sins which he must see, of the sins which he must see. Would you like to know the sweetness of the secret of the Lord? Go and hide beneath his shadow, this shall then be your reward. And whene'er you leave the silence of that happy meeting place, you must mind and bear the image of the Master in your face, of the Master in your face. Let us focus our eyes and look to the God, the almighty shining star. For only then can we have fullness of joy and enjoy his brilliance in our lives. Our purpose would be made clear and we can then enjoy his presence and peace in our lives. Amen. May his name alone be glorified. Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For today's meditation, let us turn to Isaiah 
chapter 43, verses 1 and 2. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. In a time when our spirit is so low, discouraged over the things happening around, disappointed because we cannot go ahead with our plans, distressed over the sickness and passing away of our dear ones, I would like to remind you of one of this most assuring and possessive declaration of our God. Fear not, thou art mine. We are called by our name. What an endearing father we have. We are engraved in his hand, says Isaiah 49, 16. And in Psalms we read that we are the apple of his eye. Is there anything more to be desired? Doesn't it give you a sense of belonging? Those words of honor, ownership are really encouraging. Therefore, let us not give in to emotions, but trust in God who will surely sustain us in this wicked world, whatever may be our situations or circumstances. As times pass by, our future may look bleak, but do not be dismayed. Rest in the Lord and trust in him alone. As his children, this is God's expectation from us. Absolute trust in him. Yes, absolute trust in, without an iota of doubt. Why not? Is there any God under the sun who has uttered these words, Thou art mine? This grand and great relationship can be nurtured only by trust and faith in Him. Isaiah 43 2 reads, When thou pass through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. In the present scenario, I understand that the situation of many sisters are going to be really fiery situations. In this earthly life, we can surely expect all these things to happen. But see how God preserves his children. Deliverance is assured. Psalm 37, 19 reads, They shall not be ashamed in the evil time, and in the days of famine they shall be satisfied. God has not promised a trouble-free life in this world. Our trials may be overwhelming, but deliverance is assured. So trust in him who has redeemed us by his precious blood and promised to walk with us, be it through fire or waters. He will surely remember his own. We are living in a time when faith in God is diminishing. Faith is very superficial and faith is vested in earthly or material blessings. Absolute faith and trust cannot be exercised unless you know your God. And let me tell you, and to know your God, you must be in close fellowship with him. So pray that God may increase your faith in him. Therefore, let us ingrain these words in our heart, Thou art mine, so that it will re-echo in our ears whenever we feel that we are groping in the dark. 
I would like to close with these words from Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. May these words comfort your heart and encourage you. God be with you. to share a few thoughts about a passage I'd been reading this week during my quiet time. Do you ever feel you're not good enough? You try so hard, but your weaknesses overtake you. You try to do the best you can, but it never turns out the way you want. Sometimes you feel like giving up. You keep trying, but no one notices. Well, I'd like to say you are good enough. You are loved. And you have been noticed. Why? Because in Psalm 139 verse 14 and 16 it says, You are fearfully and wonderfully made. He knew you before the foundation of the world, and he created you. There is a heavenly Father up above who loves us, who, ha who has taken notice of us, who does think of that we are good enough. He loved us so much that he gave up his life so that we don't need to suffer anymore. He bought you at a price, the price of his precious blood. He gave his only son to die on the cross for us, so that we could be set free from the chains of sin and death. Every single drop of blood was shed, was spilt, so that we could be free. Therefore, whatever wrong you have done, just know, it has all been washed away, white as snow, as it says in Isaiah 1.18. Like a clean blank slate, no blemishes, no imperfections. Everything has been made new. You have been made new. 1 Corinthians 5.17 Jesus knows your heart, and he's always ready to forgive you when you come to him. He knows your hurt, your pain, your weaknesses, your needs, your failures. He knows everything about you. He still loves you. His love is unconditional. His love doesn't depend on the good things you do, or how perfect you try to be. No, rather he simply loves you because you are his precious child. He says in Jeremiah 31.3, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I have drawn you with unfailing kindness. You are not an accident. He created you and he has a plan and purpose for you. Jeremiah 29.11 Nothing. There's absolutely nothing we can do to make him increase his love toward us. It's because he loves us unconditionally, just like it says in Romans chapter 8, 31 to 39. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, won't he also give us everything else? Can Anything, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? Yet, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord.
Romans 8, 31 to 39. As we go through global, global disasters like these, let's remember only God can give peace in the midst of chaos, joy that doesn't depend on our circumstances, comfort in the midst of grief, and a love that overflows. Hide me now under your wings, cover me within your mighty hand. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still and know you are God. I will be still and know you are God. Thank you.